Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today we want to talk about plugins and packages in Flutter. We want to start with what are packages and what are they used for, why they are called dependencies. Then we want to take a look in what is the difference between a package and a plugin. And last but not least, we want to discover the pubbot.dev website a little bit. All right, and now fire it up and let's get started. This video is supported by Blinkist. A package in Dart and Flutter is nothing else than code that someone else has written. And this code is provided by a centralized place for us so that we can download it and use it. That is a great thing because we can hope that the maintainer takes care of testing and also makes sure that this part of the code that he is providing us will work in the future. Let us take a very basic example my buy me a coffee widget that I created a year ago. It is basically just Flutter and Dart code that I created and published to the pub.dev so that every developer can access it and maybe can use it in their applications if they want to. In most cases, these packages are open source on GitHub. So you can take a look into them and check out how they have been written. Another significant benefit is that you can help these maintainers. So if they provide a package that you are interested in, you can go into their GitHub repository and ask them if you can help them by working on issues. You can create pull requests and so on and so forth. Maintainers usually are very happy if you help them. And there is also an event currently happening in October, which called the Hacktoberfest. You most likely hear it from it. And in this Hacktoberfest, open source project contribution will be rewarded with t-shirts and so on. So I will put a link down in the video description if you are interested in something like that. Packages are really great point to bring new things into our application. You have new functionality and additionally we can hope that the maintainer takes care of everything that is important here. But because our app is now dependent on this package, we call these packages also dependencies. To manage our dependencies, we have a file in Dart and Flutter, which we call pubspec.yaml. You most likely have heard from it. If you are coming from a web background, this would be most related to your package.json. In this file, you will find two sections. The first one is dependencies, and the second one are dev dependencies. Everything beneath dependencies are packages that we are relying on if the app is running on your device. That means you will have the packages that are used to display something specific. And in order to execute my buy me a coffee package, we need that in dependencies because if it is not there while the app is running, we cannot use that. Typically examples are Cupertino icons, for example, Firebase and Shimmer. All of these are packages that have to be in dependencies. Dev dependency, on the other hand, are only for development reasons. So for example, build runner or the testing framework, things that are just there to help you to develop your application. But after that, if it is redeployed to a device, you don't really need them anymore. In the Flutter world, there exists two types of dependencies. One are the packages and the other ones are the plugins. A package is Dart and Flutter code that your Flutter application can directly read and understand because it is Dart. Plugins are a little bit different. They make sure to interop with the device itself. So they talk native language if you want. So they speak, for example, in Android Kotlin and in Swift for iOS devices. This is necessary, for example, if you want to access your iOS camera or any other native device features. The Dart and Flutter team created a fantastic website called pub.dev. On this website, you can find all the interesting packages that the community provides to us that we can use. For example, state management solutions, widget solutions, all kind of testing frameworks and so on and so forth. There are a ton and ton of packages that just wait for you to get explored. In the beginning, this website pub.dev is quite full of information. So I want to give you a short round trip that you feel welcome on the page. You will find five sections. Number one is the search area. The second part is Flutter favorites. The third one are the most favorite packages. 
Fourth one are top flutter packages and last but not least the top dart packages. Before we jump right into the search area, which could be self-explaining, we want to take first a look into flutter favorites. Whenever you see this logo, you will know that this package has a certain amount of quality. The flutter favorites are a lead group of people who has a very big knowledge about flutter and they review packages by several metrics. For example, the overall package score, feature completeness, documentation, runtime behavior and own high quality dependencies. If you ask why such a badge is necessary, that is because a lot of packages are not anymore maintained or they use bad dependencies or anything else. So for large projects it is crucial to find the best quality packages and only depend on the highest quality standards. Because in the worst case packages don't get maintained anymore and you have to fork these packages and maintain them yourself if you want to have something. To bet on a wrong dependency could lead to a lot of costs in the long run. So make sure to always depend on good dependencies if you want to be production ready and long term stable. But back to our main page. The second part is the most popular packages in the last 60 days. Here you will find whenever someone is downloading a package with pub.get for example in the pubspec.yaml you will see that here recognized. The last two sections are reserved for top packages from Flutter and Dart by relevance. Relevance is the score that combines the search results, likes and package scores. So how do we find the right package for us? Let's assume we want to have a different loading spinner than the default one and we are okay to use a package for that. So we can search for loading indicators see on the right side the likes and the pub point and the popularity. The popularity shows us how often a package has been dependent to. Likes are a button on each package that shows your support and also shows other people that they could take a look into it. Hmm, where I've seen that concept already. Ah, correct, here on YouTube, there you find also a like button. So maybe it's good time to click that and subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. Fantastic, now that we have that covered, let's talk a bit about pub points. Whenever someone publishes a new package on the website of pub.dev and this runs certain checks. So for example, is the documentation there? Are there examples? Does it support multiple devices, which is very important for Flutter? Um, does it depend on very strong dependencies? Has it static analysis? All of this stuff is contained in these pub points. And every maintainer can take a look into these pub points to identify which parts he has to improve so that the community of pub.dev gets an information about how stable this package is and how they can improve their package so that the community knows this package is good. With the help of pub points, likes, popularity, flutter favorite, you should now be able to find your package. But if you are doing this for a production ready app in maybe a company, you should maybe identify even more things. So I for myself have some metrics that I would include into that. First of all, stars in GitHub could be a very big indicator. So you can see how many people that are not only in the Dart framework, but also interested in general in the development are there. Another thing is the code itself. Do you see any flaws, bugs, are there tests? So you have to make sure that everything works as intended. Another thing is licensing. Don't forget that on GitHub, not everything is directly usable for your companies and commercial usage. Only if you have the correct licenses, like for example, MIT or CC attribution or something like that, you are allowed to directly use the code that is inside there. Else the license is still at the owner of the GitHub repository. It's a little bit fuzzy that topic, so if you have any doubts about the licensing model of something, I think there are a lot of websites where you find some information. I will link that down in the video description. While packages bring great value to your application, there comes also a lot of responsibility. 
For smaller applications, usually not so big problem, but if you want to work in a production ready app on a very big scale company, you have to be worried about them. Number one, you don't have the code under your direct control. Secondly, the guy who is maintaining the package makes a big mistake and suddenly you have a bug in your code and you cannot fix it directly or you have to maintain the package again or the maintainer abandoned the package and it is not maintained at all anymore and you have to fork it and then have to support it yourself. Last but not least, there are also some security risks here. Suppose one of these dependencies, because one big dependency has a lot of smaller dependencies and these small dependencies have now also their own dependencies. Suppose one of these dependencies makes the mistake to bring inside a malicious software or a malicious part. That means all the other dependencies automatically share this malformed part. So be very mindful which dependencies you trust. Be careful which you trust. Of course, there are some security measurements. I just want to tell that there have been stories where malicious software came into very big applications by smaller packages. As you maybe know, I do a lot of self-improvement every day. If I do sport or if I program, Blinkist got me covered. Blinkist is known for its excellent summary of its books, where you can get the essence of a book in 15 minutes to read or to listen. If you got hooked now by the summary, you could enjoy the full audiobook. On Blinkist you can find a ton of valuable books filled with knowledge about technology, learning, science or productivity and every month there are around 40 new books within 15 categories. Consume as many books as you like in the next 7 days before you even start to get a subscription. My viewers will additionally receive a 20% discount on a yearly subscription. Excellent! Now that was everything for today. You learned what are packages, you know about plugins, we learned why you should use them, how you should use them, why you should be careful and last but not least how you bring the most value inside of your application with them. Please let me know in the comments below which packages you have already contributed to or even which packages you like the most. Hit the like button, subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet and we see us next week. Thank you so much for joining, until the next time, see ya guys!